Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Schmucker Security Podcast. Tonight's guest is Stephen Sparks, and he is not only a, a boxer and a motivational speaker, he's also an actor who's in one of my best, one of my close friends' films coming out. And we're going to have a nice little discussion with him about where he started at and how he got to where he's at now and why his friends call him Captain America. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thanks for having me. It's, it's great to be here. I appreciate it. Um, you're, um, you're my fifth guest, and I appreciate you taking the time out to want to come on my show and help each other build more up and... You know, especially with you being a boxer, I very much relate with that one. Nice. And your story leading up from where you were to where you are today is something I want you to talk about because I can relate to that too. I just don't have the the same the same history you do of the struggles and the issues you went through to get where you are today and what you've learned in that process. But I have a similar story that I can relate to 100%. All right. So uh, tell us where you're from, um, what you currently do right now, and then give us a little history about what got you to where you are. Yeah. Um, so currently, I'm a personal trainer, nutritionist, uh, you know, I actor out of uh, Mount Airy, Maryland. I try to you know help as many people as I can with that. Uh, that's what I really love doing the most is really just getting the chance to help people. Um, what was the other part of your question? Um, what led you to where you are today? You know, how did you, what were the struggles and the issues you went through to find the, the platform where you needed to be at? So my, uh, I guess you can say my story starts day after my 12th birthday, I was at a basketball practice and dislocated my knee for the first time. Um, that happened probably 30 more times before they realized what was wrong with my knees. Um, wow. Between those times and all the, the dislocations and trauma, uh, they would have to go in and repair um, the torn leg tendons. One time they didn't know what was wrong with me, so they pulled my quad down over my kneecap to help stabilize it. So after, you know, 17 different knee surgeries, they were finally like, oh, we, uh, we found out that you were born with a genetic defect that they weren't sure where it came from, but it caused my tibias to grow in crooked so my kneecaps weren't tracking properly. So what they had to do was go in, cut my tibias, and screw them into the right place. So I have two nine-inch screws in each knee, and they also had to replace every ligament, tendon, and cartilage there is. Mm. So, yeah, I had uh, both knees re rebuilt and replaced pretty much when I was uh, 16, 17 years old. I uh, spent probably roughly four to six months in a wheelchair after those because I wasn't allowed to be weight-bearing on any of those. Um, during that time, though, was probably the roughest point um, because of all the surgeries and all the pains that you know they were putting me on. I was taking a lot of pain medication that, you know, leads to a road of addiction because having to use it so much. And, you know, at 16, 17 years old, they're sending me home with bottles of morphine. So I was, I was getting some pretty strong stuff at a young age. Um, I see how. Yeah, I know. That'll, that'll do it. But the worst part about all that was stuck inside of a room by myself for so long. You know, being, it's like almost being in a prison cell camp. I couldn't leave, uh, really couldn't even get out of bed because I was so so messed up and crippled from the surgeries. So that was, uh, you know, years from 12 to, I believe 19 was my last knee surgery. I had spent stuck in my same room, kind of just in my own head with all the drugs flowing through. A lot of pain, I mean, pain that I probably wouldn't wish on, you know, even worst enemies. It was so bad. So yeah, that's... um. That's where my knee stories kind of started and ended. <laughs> um, in between that time, I was a big athlete, super always, as soon as, as soon as I would hurt, you know, hurt my knee one time, my 
immediate goal was get through physical therapy right back into how can I get back on a football field or basketball court or in the gym somehow. Um, so I was very always motivated to keep moving and keep pushing forward. Uh, roughly about the time I got to high school, I had missed, I was a big football player all the way from freshman to junior year. Um, I then had one of my bigger knee accidents where I dislocated both of them. Mm. Uh, that really took it out of me. So it kind of, uh, I missed my senior year of football and lost all chances that I had at going to college or wherever I wanted to go after that. So when they finally were able to fix both of them, I thought, you know, let me, let me go back into it. I can do this. No problem. I can go play football again. So I gave it a shot, went to train, um, with a really, you know, high power, you know, high coaches, very good coaches, um, gave it the best I could, but I, you know, sometimes you got to realize that you're, you just don't have the legs under you to keep pushing through those big guys. <laughs> yeah. You um, had the leg strength no more. Yeah. Then the knees don't respond like they, you know, well, really never, they really responded. <laughs> so um, is that, is that something that led you, is that what led you into getting into boxing? Yeah, that, uh, that actually, cause once I lost all chances at playing, you know, football, which was like the original love sport love for me. I, you know, I had to ask the doctors, like, what can I do? You know, I got to stay active somehow. And, uh, I was like, can I box? He said, yeah, that'd be good to go try boxing. So I was like, all right, cool. So when I started boxing, I was, um, I was actually pretty, very fat. I was like 350 pounds cause being so, you know, so much pain meds and in bed for months and years at a time, can't really move. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was, I was pretty good as a bigger guy, bigger heavyweight, but once I got to the higher levels, I was fighting guys that were six foot nine, 270 pounds. That really wasn't, wasn't where I should have been, you know, being only six, two. Um, so as I was kind of doing that, you know, I was, um, before I get ahead of myself, there was a, uh, in that time period when I was a little bit bigger, I had a heart scare as well. So I had a, was diagnosed with viral pericarditis, which is just a heart virus that attacks, it attacks the outside lining of your heart and it can cause severe chest pains. Um, so I was getting that checked out and the doctors diagnosed, they were like, oh, you have what's called left ventricle dysplasia, which means the left side of my heart wasn't pumping enough blood or getting enough blood into my body. So they were going to have to go in and install a defibrillator to my chest. So we were going through all these tests and in that time period, I was bedridden. It's because if my heart rate got above 120, they warned me that I would be in cardiac arrest and die. So I was no longer allowed to be in the boxing gym, wasn't allowed to do anything. I had to just sit and sit around at the house. And uh, that sucked at the time because still on all those, you know, coming off all those painkillers still, I was very prone to night terrors. And, um, so, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, your heart rate's going to be above 100. And, uh, so I was scared to fall asleep a lot. And, um, in that time, uh, I think I, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, there we go. Wow. Uh, yeah. I was trying to say um, you felt like you couldn't win for losing. You were yeah. back to deja vu. Yeah, really. From one, one bedroom to the next, pretty much. Um, so I, uh, I wasn't sleeping at all and having all those heart you know, pains in my chest. Very, it was a scary time thinking that you, know, you could die at any point because your heart's going to give out. Yeah. So going through all the tests, it could lay up to the point where they said, Oh no, now your right side is failing as well. So instead of a defibrillator, we got to put a whole new heart transplant in there. And I was like, Oh, oh my God, so this is a new surgery. I've never, I, you know, somewhere I've never been. And then, uh, <laughs> this part always gets me. We're one test away from going into the heart surgery 
and the doctor say, oh, we're sorry, we misdiagnosed you. You have no heart issue at all. And I was like, what? I just spent four months on bed rest thinking I'm going to die, chest pains and all. And you say, no, nah, you're fine. It was, oh, my gosh. Uh, was- I'd have been ready to fight right then and there. I'm ready to <laughs> knock the doctor out. What? what? Yeah. yeah, it was that was. It was a, such like a bittersweet moment because it was like, oh, that's such a relief. I'm okay. But at the same time, like, what do you mean? <laughs> right. God, I've yeah. been so upset. Oh, yeah. It was, it was weird. It was a strange time. <laughs> so um, did you get back into boxing? I did. The, the, as soon as I left the doctor's office, I went right back to the gym. <laughs> um, that's dedication right there. Right. And uh, it didn't last long, though, because right into that, I I, uh, I broke what's called the tendon that connects your thumb to your like your wrist. So it's called a boxer's frat tear. And it what it looks like is when, it, when I put it, I give it a thumbs up, it, it would go like that. So I'd have a sideways thumb. And I did it twice. So what they had to do is they pulled, or they pulled some tendon out of my thumb, and I was a guinea pig joint into my thumb so i have a robot joint in my thumb now because of all that too <laughs> so on top wow. of all the other surgeries i had two surgeries so being called but captain america you got a little fixed. uh tony stark in you <laughs> yeah a little bit i had it you know got the robot side <laughs> um after all that though i finally felt on the right track but you know Still a little bit on the bigger side, and my coach told me, um, "Look, Steve, you're you're fat. Got no costing yourself. We got to lose some weight, or I'm never gonna let you fight again." So I was like, "All right, coach, I'll take that challenge." So it took me about a year and a half after all the you know surgeries and painkillers and everything else. About a year and a half into that, I lost about 150 pounds. Um, felt feels really good on the knees. I've kept that off. And because of that weight loss, I was able to really focus on the boxing career. Um, I was a two time golden gloves champion, uh, nationals. I placed at roughly sixth, seventh place in the nationals. Um, got to, uh, represent Washington DC in a uh, fight out in uh, Bermuda for, you know, against the British islands. So that was really fun. Um, you know, I right on, tried right to uh, kick boxing as far as I could, but with all age and everything, they've been rough. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I just try to live it one day at a time. And uh, that's actually the name of one of my clothing lines. It business is just Living Clothing Co. So, you know, try to spread positivity through that way because that's all I've really been able to do is just kind of keep it. That's what it's about right there. You know, you – you you lost that weight and and you was able to maintain that leg and then all of a sudden you just your dreams came true you were popping everywhere you wanted to be at and doing the, your thing and that's you know a beautiful thing to see. Just trying, trying, you know, trying to just keep it rolling, keep moving somehow. That's the thing. So uh, tell me how you got in touch with uh, Cody. To be involved in his uh, film. Oh yeah, oh Cody. Oh man. Um, so I met Cody through Facebook. Um, I think it was on one of the acting platforms for you know for people looking for roles, and he said he was just looking for a, a stunt actor. And I was like, well, with fight experience. And I was like, well, I mean, I have fight experience, and I've always kind of wanted to be in acting because. You know, you watch so many movies while you're bedridden for so many months. It's like, man, I want to do that. You know, you just look up to those. So I took the chance, sent him a message, and he uh, messaged me back saying, yeah, come come try it out. And um, it was, I mean, it was a fantastic scene time. Like, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had in front of a camera. Just the way it was ran and the, the, the awesome stunts they let me do was so much fun. That sounds so, cool. Yeah, right was, uh, Cody's a cool dude. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to fit. We had talked early in the day when he started playing in that movie, and uh, I told him, you know, if I could, if if I could afford to travel down there, I would have been down there. I I would have been part of it, but it was just so hard to travel. You know, I got four kids and a full time job, so it's hard. 
Yeah, that is rough, you know. But you're living a good life. So you got, I'm you got, trying. You got to. Yeah, it's good. That's awesome. Right. I, I'm I'm yeah. filming a movie too, just like he is. That's how we know each other. I'm filming a a Friday the Thirteenth tribute movie called Jason in Indianapolis. Oh, that's awesome, man! If it was if it was closer, I'd, I'd come out for it. <laughs> hey, I'd have you. Hey, watching you do your thing, you'd be. I'd, I'd take myself out the damn film and let you be Jason because you got the size for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would it was on yeah, every dream come to be a horror hey well I've got more coming up in the future so you know maybe we could talk down the road sometime about that yeah that'd be fantastic I'm always down for traveling unless you know I'd love to get out and see the world so uh tell me um tell me why they call you uh Captain America <laughs> um, so I got that nickname from from fighting. Um, when I lost weight, I had to find something that kind of made me stick out to so build a name character for myself. Tickets, and um, I just started wearing all these different zero shirts and you know, uh, like the Under Armour, like whatever. And uh, mm-hmm. one day, one of the coaches was like, uh, "You look like a." It was like Captain America, you should uh, just wear his and just go around saying all that. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a shot. And when I did, I mean, it just kind of took off. Like, you know, I would, I had full suits on, so I was on airplanes traveling. People, Captain America, and they'd, you know, all kids be all excited to see me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is weird. You know, people um, like over in Bermuda would see me like, they, that's all they called her, Captain America. And it was just kind of like a trip off on its own thing. Huh. That's good stuff right there. Yeah, actually, I even have a little right <laughs> All right. That's cool right there. So, um, yeah. tell our guests what you, uh, what your, uh, next, what you got for yourself in the future, what you got, uh, planned, any other film work, any competitions coming up, uh, doing things with, uh, your program yeah um so in the future i got a, a few things coming up um looking to eventually make a pro debut for boxing um just working through existing pains and injuries that i have to main you know find a, that good groove that i can hold that training to make it to that next level that's been a you know that's the next challenge that i'm really focused on I'm doing more work with Cody in the upcoming Crow movie that or Days of Sodom. Um, and then let's see, I have another movie coming out. I sorry, came out. It's called The Veteran. You can check that out on Tubi TV. Um, also looking to try to get on some TV shows to continue the act career. Um, hopefully that one will take off soon too. And, uh, Let's see. I think that's that's the full agenda coming up. Trying to stay stay ready for the next fight. That's what it's all about, right there, to to keep the fight going. So, as a right, trainer, guys, what do you trying, uh, trying to fight one through each? So, as a trainer, what's the uh, normal regimen for you for a, like a the daily routine for a training? Like my personal training, yeah. Um, so my day starts uh, not super early. I don't super early, but I finish late. Um, I'll start start every day with like some hit cardio because because of my knees, I can't really run, do the road work like most you would think most professional boxers do. So I do about forty five minutes of hit to third. You know, uh, hit workouts, burpees, push-ups, all the body weight fun stuff. That I'll probably do about 10 to 20 minutes of abs to really make sure I can take the good body shots because ain't nothing worse than a body well-placed body shot. <laughs> mm. Boy, um, right there, right there on the side. That, probably, oh, yeah, them liver shots are the worst. Mm. Um, after probably take a few a few minutes, you know, or break, and then I get into heavy boxing cardio where I'll do 
seven rounds of jump rope, seven rounds of shadow boxing, seven rounds of a double in bag, and seven rounds of heavy bag. I call it my slot machine workout, which is all seven. Um, normally by then I'm pretty tired. Um, so I got to take a couple hours off. And after that, I'll, I'll probably like hiking through these trails that I've uh, carved out at the gym. The gym has like a 10 acres of woods, and we, me and one of my guys have gone through clear trails out so we'll do hike trails some people over the hills and stuff um so i get you know some decent walking cardio into i will sometimes nights come home and uh probably about three times a week we'll do yoga you know just on an app on my phone uh and then after that i spend about an hour or two coming up with new designs or kind of catchy slogans to put on you know new new shirts and t-shirts and everything for my clothing line and in any kind of way I can to message people that are looking for a personal trainer or you know, some just looking to get into like a new healthy lifestyle. And then I uh, try to just advertise to them to help them as best as I can. That sounds like a dynamic uh, platform that you have going. At least you keep yourself busy. Yeah, I keep a rough. <laughs> I gotta keep myself busy or I'll go a little stir crazy. I think uh sitting around for too many of my early years got me up and ready to go for these next few years. That's how I was, you know, when I said that I, I'd read I'd read your story that I found and got a little info, but I didn't want to spoil it for nobody. I wanted you to tell it. And you touched on being bedridden, feeling like you were in prison. That's where I can relate with you because you know, that's where my humble beginnings of an adult started at was wrong crowd, wrong place, trying to fit in, ended up in and out of jail and went to prison. And I was in isolation for two years. And you go stir crazy. You, you do. The four walls close in on you. You ain't got nothing to do. It's sleep, get up, sleep, get up. And that's it. And so I, that's where I would relate to you was where you said – you know, everything just felt like a prison because I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't get up. I can't go nowhere. I'm stuck. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. getting to where you are is a, is a beautiful story to see you going through all these surgeries and all this physical therapy for your knees and your knee replacements and having to learn to walk again and put strength on them. And now you're going around the world boxing. Bahamas and all over the place and that's something that just yeah. speaks volumes for motivation to come from that sort of situation where a lot of people are just going to take what comes and goes with it and live their life to where you took what came and said nah, nah I'm not going to let this beat me down I'm tougher than this and, you, and, you sh and you've proved that by doing what you've done and like with my my wife, you know, until I met her, I was like the the dumbest person ever because I just didn't give a care. I kept getting in trouble. And then since I've met her, you know, I have went from doing meaningless jobs that I could get all the way up to filming a movie, doing security for celebrities, doing videos and photography for WWE legends and and just all kinds of little fun stuff that – Four years ago, I would have smacked you in the face that we can't be friends because there ain't no way in hell I'm going to do this stuff. And yet, here I am. And, you know, I, I look at that, and that's what we want to get on this, these podcasts and start talking to people because, you know, everybody's got a story to tell. And when you reached out, I was like, yeah, I, I won't put him on here because he's got a story that can make people sitting back feeling sorry for themselves and looking and being like, man, I had this and I got nothing, but then see your story and be like, well, hell, if he can do it, I can do it. And that's, that's the goal for this is, you know, right. to reach out and do that and motivate others to chase a dream. You get an idea in your head. Don't give up on it. When you get to that dead end, back up and find another way to get around it. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the worst, thing, the hardest thing to do is you just gotta try. You know, just take as far as you can. When you reach that limit of your peak, at least you, at least you went and did it. You have a good story to tell. You know, when you're old, my, I was just like, when I'm old, triple again. All my my crew deck and say, hey, at least I tried everything I wanted to do in life. You know, I, I I can walk out of this world saying, you know, I gave it a shot. That's it. You gave so, it a shot. You know, since in 10 months. Uh, that's that's what keeps me rolling through. That's it. Oh, and my family, too. my family keeps me going. And that's, you know, I'm, I keep on trying to find ways you know, to do okay. things to keep on getting a motivation. You know, I do, I did this, I, I acted one time and I decided to, uh, keep it going and I couldn't find nothing. I said, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do it myself. And I didn't know nothing about nothing. And now here I am. I've done shot two scenes. I got a whole bunch of actors. I got a movie halfway put together. And I've done it all on my own by playing with the programs and learning how to do everything. And now I got a team helping me. And, you know, just to sit back and say, you started somewhere and you never thought you'd get to this point because you were just looking to do something fun. And then... Now it's serious, and, and you're educating yourself. You're meeting new people. Other ideas come to your head, and yeah, well, let's try it. You know, this podcast was, like I said, is a fifth, fifth episode, and it was, I talked to all kinds of people, wrestlers, celebrities, authors. I, I talked to all kinds of people. I should get some of these people I talk to all the time onto my show and then get others to want to be on there to have stories to tell because this can go places. And so, you know, your idea of boxing, you know, when I started boxing, I did it to, to do it, but I had a blind eye. They wouldn't let me do anything, practice, train, and spot. And I got to be in the ring sometimes over here with some, some names when I was young before I went to jail. And it was fun, and it was, you know, I want to be him, but I'm never going to be this person. And that kind of led me into being rebellious because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. And now here I am doing this, and I'm, I'm, I'm having fun with it. I'm enjoying it, and I want to continue doing it. So I found a, something to keep me out of trouble, and this is it. And people like you is what awesome. motivate people like me to want to keep going. Right. The feeling is mutual too, because you know you're you're just you're trying to better your life, and you know that's that's one of the things I I, I, I find the most uh, I guess admirable, you know, attractive in terms of like general, just why people is their you know their resilience to just go after what you know what they want the most in life um that's those are the people i'm drawn to the most are the that say you know what i you know this past stuff has happened but i got i got something to look forward to so that those are the kind of people i i find you know the best to be around like yourself maybe one of these days we'll get together and we'll uh we'll come up with something to do to make it memorable to to share with everybody that can be something that's just unique. We can all get together and do something one of these days. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, maybe your next movie. I'll come out to Indianapolis. I've never been out there, so I'll come check it out. Do some, shoot a couple scenes. Make make the magic happen. Hey, I'd, I'd be more than willing to have you out. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, it's um, coming up on 30 minutes, so you ready to close out? Uh, yeah, I think we got pretty much everything good, nicely covered. I'll make sure to include some of your content at the end of the podcast, as well as a way to get in touch with you if anybody wants to reach out and try to uh, get in touch and ask some questions or possibly book you for something because I, I got a lot of people watching so never know what could happen yeah.
Oh, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. It, you know, it was great being on your show. I look forward to hopefully again coming on with that one. Have a few more extra roles. Maybe I'll uh, Captain America will be more known throughout the you know America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll keep track, and then if something big happens, reach out to me, and I'll bring you back on. Definitely. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Not a problem. I want to thank everybody for watching tonight and taking their time out to listen to Stephen talk about being a boxer, being an actor, going through some tremendous struggles as a teenager and missing out on his last golden years as a teenager, but now coming into his adult life. He's knocked that. He's knocked the wind out of it because he's doing something that keeps him going every day, and he loves it. And so, I'd like you guys to follow him, give him some support. Feel free to reach out to me to get his information if you uh, have a good enough reason to, and I'll make sure that uh, I'll reach out to him. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you.